Booster Course Wave 6, the final DLC for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, is here, and we're checking out all changes and differences made for the returning courses. The first race of the Acorn Cup is Tour Rome Avanti. It's the capital of Italy and one of the cities of the ancient world, home to the Trevi Fountain and other elaborate fountains, two of which feature obelisks of different origins, famous statues like that of Victor Emmanuel II, the gardens of Villa Borghese, and various ruins, including the most iconic in the nation, the Roman Colosseum. So how does the most recent update differ from its mobile appearance? Let's find out. Rome Avanti debuted as part of the Night Tour in 2023, delivering the first and second variants, with the third variant released in the 2023 Anniversary Tour. For the Switch version, these paths are covered over the span of three laps, with the second variant traversed both normally and in reverse by passing through spots blocked off before. However, one small part has become inaccessible. Even beyond these details, numerous differences set these two versions apart. First is a variety of gameplay changes. Lap 1 starts in Via del Corso and follows the first variant route initially, turning left at Piazza Venezia to head towards the Colosseum. The swoops along the ascending spiral here were cleared out in one fell swoop. Seen when leaping from the top, the ruins by the Palazzo Senatorio were replaced with rocks more hugging the building. Fallen pillars in the Roman Forum were eradicated. The steps of the Arch of Septimius Severus became buried and stepping stones that don't slow racers were placed amidst the off-road grass. Piazza del Campadoglio opened up fully for both affected laps to allow passage on either side of the equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius. Instead of turning right at the Mouth of Truth to go straight into Piazza Navona, drivers are given a detour to pass under the left arch into Campo de Fiori before reaching the fountains, akin to the third variant. As a result of the route shift, the path past the Bocca della Verità is closed forevermore. Megato. The Piazza Navona glide ramp, smaller than before, activates at about 1 minute 5 seconds, making it possible to use on the first lap if driving slowly. Rocky wrenches appear here like in 2R in slightly different spots, minus the one at the end, but fuzzies circle above like in the third variant at the same time, with both sets spinning clockwise rather than going in opposite directions. As expected, racers turn to the right at Piazza del Popolo to Ville del Corso to finish the lap. Lap 2 begins by following the route of Romavanti 2R. The corner curb to the right no longer is lowered, preventing a shortcut. At the police box in Piazza Venezia, the route switches to the first variant again, but not for long. The curb on the left when approaching Piazza Navona again was raised, blocking off the corner cut, with hedges added to assure that. Because of tight looping, it's possible to hit trailing racers from this point forward. Drivers go around the Flaminio Obelisk in Piazza del Popolo, similar to 2R, but they cross the left side in a way never possible before for a route change to the normal second variant by the Pizzeria. Wow, pizza in the piazza! Fancy that! The Spanish steps are up ahead, and it's possible to lose shells shot from behind at the top because of the removal of the crowd control fence here. At the next police box, racers head back to Via del Corso to conclude the lap, without any barrels along the way. The final lap aligns with the route of Romavanti 3. Not much has changed that affects the gameplay here, but the Trevi Fountain Basin is now traversable underwater. Other than that, this route is identical to the third variant all the way to the finish line. È diventato più semplice. Well, the aesthetic changes are quite extensive. The minimap was rotated 180 degrees, no longer showing the part that isn't used anymore. Of course, there's the general lighting, texture, mild coloration, and spectator differences too. The clouds also differ, and the moon has been rotated and relocated. Some lights in windows were turned either on or off all over the city. And little birds are here even though it's night. The uniform bricks of the main streets have become irregular, and the sidewalks now are cobblestone. Flowers growing in various spots were plucked, with some grass clumps moved to different spots. Regardless of what textures, or lack thereof, some buildings had, many were given matching or balanced types for aesthetics. At the starting line, the checks increased from 21 by 3 to 23 by 3, surprisingly. And while the starting line banner, or gate, is virtually unchanged, it's worth noting that it resembles the front of the otherwise absent Pantheon. Lighting effects are significantly different at the Victor Emmanuel II monument, especially behind the colonnade. Other spots may have been illuminated or enveloped in darkness since tour. Railing was added along the sides of the road first leading into the Colosseum, with dirt and grass replacing the cement beyond, even removing a triple bush planter on the right. The steps leading down and others like these became brick. Similarly, the road below has a simple brick texture now, with other paved areas of this type altered the same way. And naturally, the Colosseum walls are more clearly brick as well. Oddly, the transition line between the road and Colosseum floor was removed. Red crowd control fences became white and vice versa, but we don't know why. 
at the Roman Forum, cracked tiles replaced the brick road. The ruins of the Temple of Saturn and the Temple of Vespasian and Titus sunk into the ground, likely for a better view of them. Bricks in Piazza del Campidoglio are now small tiles. All archway brickwork, trim included, switched from polychrome to uniform. The road for both the fork here and beyond changed to an updated fanned cobblestone style. Safety cones were added by the shortcut to the right in Campo de Fiori. On the other side, the moped, or motorino, was reoriented. Some food actually looks the color of what it's supposed to be rather than being this sus blue. Containers with red swapped up for the blue that plagued the food, and the air conditioning units above were rearranged. Meanwhile, the container by the second scooter disappeared entirely. Police box lights are on now. The glide ramp style is different, featuring metal rather than whatever material blocks are supposed to be. Fountains of the Piazza Navona all flow. Rocky wrenches more resemble their original Super Mario Bros. 3 design rather than that from Tour. And blue safety cones were put in Piazza del Popolo, close to the building by the finish line. Along the route for lap 2, the left turn sign near Piazza Novona and the barriers below it were removed. At the same time, the red barrier moved to the right where the others were, and bushes were added in its former place. The crowd control fences in front of the Porta del Popolo were changed and rearranged, with no wooden arrow sign present. In Piazza di Spagna, the water of the Fontana della Barcaccia also flows. The barriers of the Spanish steps became the chevron type. Meanwhile, the four special cylindrical chevron signs by the Trinità di Monti were replaced by just two regular chevron barriers, with all of them arranged to fit. Safety cones by the Temple of Esculapius in the Villa Borghese gardens were pulled out. On the other side of the pond, the rope fencing style at the Passaggiata del Pincio is a bit different. The ramp here and below at the Terrazza del Pincio also changed a little, more level with five arrows instead of six. Intended for lap three, blue traffic cones were placed at the left corner at Via del Corso. The Piazza di Trevi glide ramp style was modified to feature five arrows rather than seven. And naturally, the Trevi fountain flows now as well, more robustly than the others. Just look at the beautiful glow of the water and the tiles that have become visible along the basin. The lone flower pot nearby was replaced by a couple of potted plants and the road here and into Trajan's market ahead became cracked tiles. The red arrow sign by this entrance to the Colosseum was pulled out, and railing was installed on both sides with the pavement beyond on the left transformed into dirt with dead grass, much like the other entrance. Inside the Colosseum, steel plates have single grid markings now rather than double, with rust spots formed. The pegs for the chain chomps were moved from the basement to near ground level by the walls, but the basement itself seemingly is not as deep in order to better see the guard dogs. And lastly, a wooden arrow sign was placed at the exit, with trees and rocks added by it. Mamma mia, ero molto. For auditory changes, there are the continuous sounds of fountains while racing past them and the soft city traffic ambiance in the opening, but a unique one would be the different noises from rocky wrenches. <laughs> What's more interesting is the music for Romavanti. Rather than a traditional Italian style or even modern pop, it's much like a Hollywood premiere, making it more Tarantino than Tarantella. In addition to jazzy percussion and acoustic bass, the theme's palette consists of tremolo mandolin, oboe, strings, accordion, and more. The original has pronounced toms and solo snare hits in the intro and drum fills, and the cymbals seem to have more presence in this version. The arrangement follows closely to the source, but the intro and drum fills rely more on snare rolls and articulations to give energy to them. Some counter melodies and supporting instruments are better balanced, allowing them to be heard more easily, like the mallet in the A section and the bassoon in the B section. 
finally, the sweep up has a much more satisfying punch with the orchestral instruments and percussion overall. Bellissima. And that's about it for all changes we found in Tour Roma Avanti. It's a lively adventure through Roma Romantica, with many sights to see from the twists and turns, thanks to several route shift surprises, but racers may find themselves in the same areas a lot. But what do you think? Have you found any notable changes that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. Special thanks go to Burkett Reaper for assistance with local knowledge and the Italian language. And of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more coverage of the Booster Course Pass for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and other things Nintendo too. Thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao!